two, one. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Now we're going to take questions now. So you introduce yourself, your media, your name, and straight to the question. Please don't give us back up. All right. So welcome, coach, and welcome everybody. All right. So your name, please. All right. I'll start with you. Your name, media. Oh, I'm Francis Inouye of Real Media. Uh, coach Otto, uh, the last time in uh, Kumasi, we saw you sweating profusely. Uh, I, I would like to have a repeat of that tomorrow. This is a very friendly question to start with. But he said he was sweating profusely. Are we seeing that tomorrow? Um, I don't know. And uh, our time is very limited. So please try to have good questions because every other person will have pop up questions. You know, this is nothing for the game. Oh, I'm, I'm a sweater. If I'm hot, I'm sweating. That's it. And maybe it will be tomorrow as well. Unless we score maybe two, three goals, then I'm cool. <laughs> Thank you for handling my training. That was serious. Thank you. Coach, um, at 0, zero this tie is still up for grabs. So what is it you're going to do differently, if at all, you know, to make sure you can win this game here in Nigeria? After this, we're taking two questions for Gideon. Um, it's a good question, but if, if I, I will tell you this, then maybe, I don't know, it won't be a surprise for tomorrow. So I think we had some good things. Uh, in the game, um, we had uh, more ball possession and we played well and um, yeah, but surely we have to improve. We have to improve in, on, on, on not allowing chances. There was one chance, big chance against us, so we tried to stop that definitely. And um, up front also we tried to create a little bit more, but uh, I was in all satisfied and uh, yeah, surely we'll try to score tomorrow. Question for Gideon. Question for Gideon. Question for Gideon, not now. Question for Kid Gideon. Okay. Please walk, walk this way, please. Thank you. Uh, Muftah Nabila, uh, Multimedia Group. Gideon, um, you and your colleagues should match fighting spirit in the first leg. Every Ghanaian will be looking forward to seeing a similar thing tomorrow. Um, is there some form of communication within the group? Because qualifying to the World Cup will be history made. Um, yeah, I mean, um, like you said, we, we had a fighting spirit in the first leg in Kumasi, and then um, obviously um, the game was still 0-0, zero, zero, so we, we won nothing until now, so um, we are here to push more and then to give a more fighting spirit, so we should expect something more than we did in Kumasi. Thank you. Last question for Gideon. What this week, please. You're welcome to Nigeria. My name is Echo Amos. I'm from this radio. Here you are in Nigeria. Even though the first leg uh, seemed to have uh, a lot of uh, top tax in it because the fans, everybody was expectant to get the result. What would it be if Ghana does not qualify to the FIFA 2022 World Cup? Um, <laughs> first of all, we are not thinking about Ghana not qualifying. Um, we, we are qualifying, obviously. So um, I think we'll leave that question for after the game. Yeah. Thank you, Gideon Kengo. Thank you. All right, so three more questions. We're canceling the first question. All right, so three more questions now uh, for Coach Otto. Okay, yes. Pius. All right, good evening, Coach. Uh, my name is Pius. I work with Cool FM Nigeria and Fanny Mazuka FM here in Abuja. Um, you know, your attack, your, your, your forward players, um, seem not to be scoring a lot of goals and it was evident in the first game in Kumasi. Now, um, does that give you scare coming into this game? And also, you said during the presser in Kumasi that Nigeria are not the favorites. Are you saying your team is better than the Supremes? So the first one was what again? Is our attackers can't score. Ah, okay then, if you think so, we'll see tomorrow. <laughs> it's, I think we had, uh, we had some chances, some situation where the last pass was missing, and if we improve that, you'll see a scoring. But nobody knows. And to be honest, I don't think we're better than Nigeria, but I don't think they're better than us. It's, it, it was an equal day, 
I think everybody saw, and it will be very, very equal uh, tomorrow. So it's, uh, I can't say that they are favorites, we are favorites, but what I can say is, if we shoot one goal, it hurts more than if they shoot a goal. My name is Amma Ignis, I work with Radio Nigeria. Obviously, it appeared you were much under pressure in Ghana. Your first time out handling the team after the sacking of the former coach. Are you still under pressure? What is it like? What will it be like for you playing away from Ghana and coming to Nigeria? Will the pressure do you think will be on Nigeria or Ghana? Um, okay, first of all, I have a, diff a different definition of pressure. Pressure for me is a privilege. To sit here in front of you as a coach from the Ghana national team is a privilege. It's not pressure for me. I was dreaming from, uh, about this moment. I think 30 million Ghanaians would like to be here. So it's a privilege. It's not pressure. Pressure is when I have to think what I eat tomorrow. This is pressure. But this is no pressure. But surely you want to qualify. And we, we, I just told, tell, told the guy, go out and have fun. Have fun. If you make mistakes, I will take it on me. We will try to play football, surely. And uh, we try to score, we try to win. We do our best. And what I was very surprised of that at least the Ghanaian press really, really acknowledged that we tried to play football. Even though we didn't win, everybody saw that we played better than before. And they acknowledged that and I really, really much appreciate that. But like Gideon said, we haven't won anything. So, but this is football. Sometimes you play good, you lose. Sometimes you play bad, but you can win. Everybody likes football because of that. So. To be get back to you, it's a privilege to be here. It's a privilege to, to have the chance to go to the World Cup and we will do everything we can to qualify. Last question. Thank you very much, Will. I'm Sadiq Adams from MDL FM in Ghana. Uh, Coach, you're one of your most experienced players, uh, Jordan Ayu, uh, had some unfortunate incidents in Kumasi despite playing well. I think there was an issue there. Have you spoken to him? How does he feel going into the game here? Uh, the fact that he was good at home despite playing well, how does he feel? Okay. The first thing is the rules were for me, I think, because I decide who play and who don't play, who doesn't play. So it's my choice. It's not John's choice to come off the pitch or stay on the pitch or to play or not. It's mine. So if anybody wants to say something, he can say it to me. I don't have a problem with that. And I know, especially in Africa, people always see a lot of, uh, they acknowledge more offensive action. But if you see what Jordan did in the first time, especially defensively, covering spaces, recovering, running for others defensively, not letting anybody through, uh, even holding the ball, not losing the ball, this is much worth, and he's a leader. He's a leader of our team. He's the only person in this team who has been to the World Cup before. So we really, really need him. His experience, which is given to the young players, he's helping a lot of players on the pitch, off the pitch. So football is so complex. It's not just about scoring goals. It's also about making assists. It's also about leading. It's also about yeah, working defensively. It's, it's so complex and John is very, very important for this squad. Thank you, coach, and good luck. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Ewan.